it's really hard for most people, super, super hard. Most people struggle a lot with topology. You might say, is it because they're not as smart as other people? And the answer is no, that's not why. In this video, we're gonna talk about several reasons why I think topology is a very hard class for people and how you can do better if you ever decide to study topology. We're also gonna talk about what this book contains and we're gonna take a look at the mathematics in this book. This is a beautiful book. It's very clean, it has a very nice clean layout. It's very thin, but it's filled with tons of mathematics. I can't wait to show you what's in this book. First, let me just say that the reason topology is tough for people, I think, well, there's two reasons. One, people have a weak background. So if you are not good at proof writing, you are going to struggle with topology. That's not to say that you shouldn't just jump in. I always think if you want to learn something, just jump in, just accept the fact that you're gonna get stuck, you're gonna be confused. It's okay not to get it, right? It's normal, it's part of the learning process. So jump in, but just know beforehand that having a strong mathematics background helps. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about knowing how to write baby proofs. Uh, you know, if you really ideally wanna have you know, a course in advanced calculus behind you, you wanna know how to prove set theory proofs like that. You, know, you wanna know some of these set theory propositions. You wanna have them memorized, especially the ones with functions and unions and intersections. Or you should be able to prove them on the fly really quickly on the side. If you, if you forget the, the theorem that you need to use, you should be able to go to the side and prove it. Oh yeah, okay. The inclusion goes this way. Okay. So you can figure stuff out for the proof on the side. So you need to have some solid math. So that's the main reason people struggle. Two is, and this is something that's kind of beyond your control. If you take a topology course in college, you want to have a good teacher. I was super fortunate to have a wonderful teacher as an undergraduate. The man was awesome, um, super, super hardcore, super good teacher, super friendly, loved him. And as a graduate student, I had a famous topologist who was my teacher, and that was an experience. He was brilliant. And I, you know, I kept their notes, I still have them. Someday I should show you some of these notes. Uh, really intense mathematics. But in any case, having a good teacher makes a great, great, impact on your learning experience when you're trying to learn topology. So yeah, so let's, let's take a look at this book. So let's open it up. Georgia Institute of Technology. Someone left a comment, by the way, they asked, why are my books so clean looking? I don't write in my books. Uh, very rarely do I write in my books. To the memory of George L. Kane. Wow, wow, poor guy, he passed away apparently, 1906 to 1975. And this book is from 1994, so it's an older book. Here it talks a little bit about who the book is for. This book is designed for an introduction to general or point set topology, right? So this is what you study as an undergraduate, oftentimes again as a graduate. Although intended primarily for an undergraduate course, the contents have been used for both an undergrad course or for an introductory graduate course. Yeah, sure, you could take this as a first year graduate student. The prerequisites are deliberately modest and it is assumed that this will be the student's first experience with abstract mathematical reasoning. Now, I, I don't think that's necessarily, um, I mean, this would be a very, very hard <laughs> first encounter with you know, your first experience you know, in abstract mathematical reasoning. I, I, I think people would struggle. So I think you, do, you definitely want to have uh, some background, but it's good that George had that, that was his intention, right? Let me fix my light here, get some better lighting. Whoops, here we go, there we go. So here are the topics sets, relations and functions, equivalence relations. So this is stuff that you typically learn in a proof writing course or in a discrete math course if you're, well, not, not Zorn's Lemma, that would be in a proof writing course, not a discrete math course. But some of these other things like equivalence relations you would learn in a discrete math course as well. Pseudometric spaces, something you may have never seen maybe. Topological spaces, continuous functions. Look, look how quick it is, right? It doesn't, it doesn't spend that much time on each topic. It's very to the point. Connected spaces, compact spaces, product spaces. I love looking at Hausdorff spaces because uh, Hausdorff, uh, Felix Hausdorff was a man, he was a mathematician and he actually wrote books. I have his famous book on set theory. And you learn about Hausdorff spaces in topology. Sequences, complete pseudometric spaces, Euclidean spaces, quotient spaces, hyperspaces and multifunctions, and then dimension even Hausdorff dimension, there's references and an index. So let's just jump in. 
Um, let's go to, how about we look at Hausdorff spaces? So that was, let's just, I thought I saw it here earlier. We also called T2 spaces. So here we have products of Hausdorff spaces. It doesn't really say where they define Hausdorff space. So there's the Hausdorff metric. Let's look in the index. It should be somewhere in the beginning. And we can take a look so you can see what that is. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, they just talk about dimension and then measure and then the metric. Hausdorff property, 80, page 80. Let's go there. That's what we want. We call it the Hausdorff property in this book, which is a, a, good, a, good, a good thing to call it. It makes sense. I mean, I was able to find it by looking in the, um, in the index. A topological space X is a Hausdorff space if for every X and Y in X, with X not equal to Y, there are disjoint open sets, U and V, with X and U and Y and V. Okay, and then it says here, that's it. And it says the familiar idea of a metric space provides a rich supply of Hausdorff spaces. Let me show you what this means. Let me just get a piece of paper here just to clarify this. So uh, say you have a, a topological space. Right, say we have that, and let's just say this is x, and this is our this is our topological space. So topological, what, logical, I can't spell space. It's a weird camera angle, sorry, so my writing is not very good. Topological space, and it says for every uh, x, y, and x, so if I pick an x here, and I pick a y here, okay, with x not equal to y, so you pick two different points in your topological space, that means that there exists, there's an existence, you can find some open sets, say U and V, such that X is in U, right? Because you can see here X is in U, so we have that X is in U, and we have that Y is in V. And these are disjoint sets, meaning if you uh, take the intersection, it's, it's the empty set, right? They have nothing in common, so they're completely disjoint. So u intersect v is equal to the empty set. So they don't meet, right? You have two sets that don't meet. So given any two points, no matter how close, so you know, something else to think about, right? I mean, if you, if you have distance, right? If there's a distance involved, like in a metric space, you say, well, no matter how close, you can still separate them. You can still find open sets to separate uh, x and y. As long as x is not equal to y, you should be able to separate them with two open sets, two disjoint open sets that contain X and Y that are disjoint. So that's the idea uh, behind a Hofstor space. And here it talks, it gives a, a proposition, a pseudo metric space is a Hofstor space, if and only if it is a metric space that goes to the proof. So you have to know uh, pseudo metric spaces and some other things before you can, you can understand that. But the layout of this book, let's go back to the beginning, some more basic things. Let's just see how it starts so you can see. Here's the beginning, so here's where it starts. We begin with a brief introduction to the ideas and language of set theory used throughout the book. So it talks to, talking about sets, and you see how it gets kind of like straight to the point. See how it does that? It just goes straight to the point. It doesn't like spend a lot of time, um, you know, messing around. It's got examples, it's got definitions, it's got theorems, it's got proofs. It's got proofs, and the proofs are pretty clean. Let's look at this one here. This is a set theory proof. Suppose C and D are collections of subsets of X. Okay, collections. Then the union of the C is intersected with the union of the D is equal to the union of C intersect D. Okay, I see. So it's just a general statement about uh, the intersection of unions. And it goes through here and it gives you the proof. And then here's a corollary of that. So they prove a more general statement, and then they just prove this one here, which is this uh, distributive property, basically. You can call it that if you want, right? You basically have A being distributed through the union. So A intersect B union C is A intersect B union A intersect C. So pretty, pretty intuitive stuff. And this is kind of the kind of stuff you want to memorize. So you might, you, if, you, if you have this statement in a proof, you should be able to go from here to here knowing that you can do this. It's kind of like, oh yeah, from the properties of set theory, I can do this. And that's what, uh, you need to have a strong command on set theory. And so it's good that this book does that. Let's see if they have some other stuff here because there are other things you need in topology. There's a lot of um, set theory things with functions. Oh, here we go, here's some function stuff. 
the image, inverse image. This is really important in topology. This comes up in a lot of the proofs. I like how they give you concrete examples too. That's kind of fun. So you can kind of understand what's going on there. And then they do the same thing here. They, they have a collection and they go through and they, and they approve it that way. Which is a little bit different than some of the other books. Just the notation is different, that's all. Talks about the restriction, the composition. So basic stuff, one-to-one -one functions, onto functions, inverse functions. All stuff that ideally you've seen before. So I, I don't think this is a great uh, first introduction to abstract math mathematics. But it's got good exercises, as you can see. I don't believe this book has answers, which is a big, uh, big downfall. Uh, but it's, it's a great book, nevertheless, and I still think it's, it's worth owning if you can find a copy. Uh, I, I don't know if this is in print. Probably not. I, I haven't even looked. Uh, I don't even know where I got this book. And I think I got this at an actual bookstore. I'll, I'll look for it, and if I can find it online, I'll leave a link in the description uh, in case you want to check this one out. But yeah. Oh, equivalence relations. That's something that's really, really important. Yeah. This is a good source of examples and problems, I think. I like this book. I feel like I should work out some of these exercises and make videos or something. These look really fun. Yeah, this is good stuff. I gotta give it a whiff here. Just, ah, amazing. Anyways, wonderful book. Uh, I recommend it. I think if you're looking for a great book, this, this is a good one. If you wanna learn mathematics, by the way, I, I do have courses. They're on my website, uh, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but if you get them, please use links from my website, mathsorcerer.com. Or, or from the description of any of my videos. And I've got courses on all kinds of math. I don't have a topology course. Um, I do have some free videos on topology on, on YouTube, uh, like introduction to topology, stuff like that, but, and a couple proofs. But this is a good book, and if, you're, if you want to learn topology, you could try this book. I don't think it's like the best beginner book, but it's, it's a good one. I hope it's been helpful. Take care.